Hello again there folks, Lone Adventurer here. Thanks very much for once again stumbling your way upon my channel and joining me for this adventure. Today I am continuing my playthrough of Die in a Dungeon from Roland Kuntz. This is a game that is on Kickstarter pretty much now. There'll be a link down in the description below, or at least round about now at time of recording. This is part two of my playthrough. If you want to see the start, or you want to see me having a bit of a chat and an overview of the game, I'll put a link up in the corner of the screen right about now and in the description below. So this is where we were. We have been through a couple of rounds. Three of our heroes, represented by these dice, so this is the War Priest, the Berserker, and the Mercenary. So they have found themselves all of a sudden in a room with some zombies. We've got some ooze up in this direction, and we're at the start of a new round. So I have got my action cards here. We've currently only got move and battle cards, so we can move or we can battle, or a combination of the two. As a side note, I did notice in the last playthrough that any cards sort of placed in this area here tend to have a bit of a shine on them, and I apologise for that. They look absolutely fine when I'm sitting at the table, and there's not a huge amount I can do about that, except turn off my light, and then, obviously we have a different problem. So eventually we're gonna to have to put cards there and I apologize for the sheen, but these cards are quite shiny. We're gonna have a battle. So these are gonna face the zombies. And if we take a slightly closer look, just to remind you. So the battle card plays from the hand. I think I may have explained this symbol incorrectly in the last video. This means that you have to discard another card. So in order to battle, we have to discard a card from our hand, then we do the battle action, and then we have to discard this card as well. And this is our enemy that we're going to be facing. We have got to assign three of our heroes of value five, two, two or more in order to win, and when we win we're going to flip this card over. So in order to battle we are going to discard one of our move cards, or oh, that's our deck there, let's put the deck in front of us, Have our discard over there. And just to confirm we have heroes with a value of 9, 14 and 8, which comfortably beats the 5, 2 and 2 that are required. And so we defeat those zombies in battle, flip them over to the other side and then we have to re-roll all the heroes in that room regardless of whether they were involved in the battle but all these guys were anyway okay that's not too bad bit of a poor roll on the war priest there just a two and then we've got a six and a 17 so that's pretty decent so now we're going to discard the battle card and that is essentially done. Now we can battle the zombies again if we wish, and I think that we might. And in fact let's actually go and do that, because we've got a second battle card, so we're going to use our battle card. In order to activate the battle we're going to discard one of our remaining moves. We need to, this time, only assign one of our heroes to battle the zombies. Doesn't really matter who, but we'll assign the berserker. And that is enough to defeat the zombies and to kill them. So we'll deal with that in a second. Once again we have to re-roll our hero dice, or oh, we've got some bad results this time. A one, a three and a one. It's not gonna get much worse than that. And we can discard the battle card. And then we have to decide what we're gonna do with our defeated enemy. Now sometimes you will have a number of quests that you can assign a defeated enemy to. On this occasion, we've only got one. It is uh, an enemy of this type. 
with the little skull, and we can assign enemies of that type that have been defeated towards our treacherous trail quest. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop that there, and that is now counting towards our completion of that quest. Actually, maybe I'll tuck it underneath. And that's more or less the end of our go, really. We've got a final move action that we could use. I'm not really sure what we would do with that. I suppose we could carry on exploring the dungeon. Why don't we do that? I'm going to use the move to move our scout through the dungeon into... Am I going to go to this location? Maybe I will. And that's going to open up three new areas. Here we go. That one there. That one there. Oh, I should have been taking those off the bottom. I took one of them off the bottom. I can't remember if I took that one off the bottom. doesn't matter too much. And that one there. And that is the end of our go because we've run out of uh, cards. So we need to draw back up to five. One, two, three, four, five. That's our new hand. Then we bring a new enemy into the mix and it is another one of the exact same type. Maybe that's a good thing uh, because it means that we're going to quickly work towards completing this quest. But the downside is that it will activate other enemies of that type. So this ooze over here is going to get activated and we can see that if it activates in an empty area it crawls, moves one towards the nearest hero. So that's what it's going to do, it's going to move into this area here so the ooze is now in with our hero and we can start a new round. So we've got to move, we've got to move, prepare a move and a search. So we don't have a dead end yet, which is a shame because the dead ends are where you can search, where you can find treasure and stuff. So it's kind of a shame that we don't have one of those. I guess I'll just have to keep on exploring. I'm not sure what will happen here because we're going to struggle to place another card there, aren't we? So I'm not sure how to deal with that. I'll have to look at the rules in a second. But let's not worry about that for the time being. I'm going to use this prepare. Reroll any number of heroes in a single room. You may pay an additional card to take this action again. So let's give that a go. Still pretty rough, but it's enough to potentially defeat the ooze. Have we got a battle card? No, we haven't. That's a shame. So we'll, we'll call that done, I think. And then moving. Should we keep on exploring? Okay, so I know how we're going to deal with that now. And we're going to move in there to demonstrate how that works. I'm going to move my Archmage through into there using the move action. And then that will trigger an explore. Now, if you trigger an explore and the card for the area you are exploring would not be possible to place, we haven't got room there, you instead flip over the card you're on. So it turns out that is actually a dead end. So now we've got a dead end to play with, we can do this search action. Draw a card from the loop deck and place it on an empty dead end or treasure room discard this card. By empty, I don't think it means not having anyone in. I think it means not currently having any loot in. So we're going to take our loot deck, which actually has a trap on the top at the moment, but we draw from the bottom. So we're going to draw a card and we're going to place that loot in this dead end. So we've now got a loot card we can theoretically uh, grab. So if we look at this card here, we can see that uh, getting loot is quite tricky. First of all, we have to search. So we do a search action, we have to discard a card. We roll all of the heroes in this room. If the search target is met, add this card to your discard pile. So it goes into the discard pile this way up. 
and then if it's in our hand we can do one of two things with it we can return it to the loot deck to pay a cost a loot cost or we can discard four cards to appraise this loot and flip it over to see what it actually is so that is our search action done i don't think we discarded a card did we and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also move our outlaw through into this room as well. And I've just realised that when I moved the Archmage in there, we should have talked about sneaking. Because when the Archmage and when the outlaw moved from the village into this location, they had to get past the ooze. And the only way you can get past the use is by sneaking. And we've got a sneak target here in the bottom left of the enemy, and it is five. So any heroes with five or less can sneak past. And any hero with a face value greater than that couldn't sneak past. Luckily, both these heroes have five or less as their face value, so they are all good to sneak past. So we've used that move. We're out of cards. However, we do have this search action here. So this, oh no, but that requires uh, a card to be discarded. So we can't do that. So that is the end of our go. Our deck is now empty. So I'm having to reshuffle our discard pile to restock the deck. Then we're going to have five new cards. And we're going to have a new enemy. I should say at this point that if we run out of these enemies, that's game over. And we've got some goblins. So the goblins are going to enter the dungeon through an open exit that hasn't been explored yet. So we'll pop them up here. They are of a different type to the Mimic and the Ooze. So the Mimic and the Ooze are not going to be activated. They're just going to stay where they are and we can start a new round. So I think the first thing we're going to do is to search and see if we can gain this loot. So we're gonna to have to roll the two heroes that are in there and hope that one of them achieves a value of three or less. And we have, because our outlaw here is on a value of two, and that means we can move the loot card into our discard pile over here and then when we have run out of cards it will enter into our deck and we can start thinking about using it so that's pretty cool so in order to do that search action remember i have to discard a card so i'm just going to discard this search card and we've got a battle here so we we want to think about doing a battle i think and i'm pretty sure it's this ooze here that we want to battle have I been discarding a card when I battle? I think I might not have been. I'm not really sure. I've kind of lost track because I know I forgot what that meant when we started playing. I think in the playthrough I did off screen, I definitely wasn't discarding cards for battles. But we're going to do it now. We will discard this move card. We will assign our Berserker to the Ooze. The Berserker will comfortably defeat the Ooze, and the Ooze is dead. We're going to pop that under there. So we've now got two of the three enemies we need in order to complete the Treacherous Trail quest over there. We need to re-roll all of the heroes that were in this room. Again, we've got quite low values here. Two, four, and eleven. And that is our battle done we can discard that and all we've got left now is two move cards but let's let's keep exploring let's move uh, the outlaw over to here using that move card and what have we got here got one more card we can just about squeeze that in and i think i'm gonna move yeah i think i'm gonna move our outlaw again and I'm going to move him out to the village and the reason I'm doing that is I just want to be able to think about using our buildings 
and you have to have someone in the village to do that. that that's it, really. We're going to draw back up to five. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to have a new enemy. Shroom folk. So the shroom folk are going to enter over here. And they are of the same type as the Mimic, which means the Mimic is going to act. So let's have a look at what the Mimic does if they are in an empty room. Shuffle this card into the monster deck. Devoured heroes are killed. OK, so the Mimic disappears, goes back into the monster deck, and we're going to give our monster deck a little shuffle. The Mimic can devour a hero and they get stuck inside the Mimic. So had that have happened, then we would have lost that hero, but luckily it did not happen. So there you go, that's not too bad really. All right, so on to a new round. I think I'm going to start by moving the Archmage over to here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to create another dead end here. Mainly, was he on two? I don't really know what he was on. Oh well, he's on two now. And I'm mainly doing that because I just want to close off the dungeon a little bit so you can start to see what will happen if our dungeon becomes uh, completely enclosed and if it becomes a little bit more claustrophobic because it does kind of change the way the game works. We've got to prepare a move, a battle. I don't think I'm going to battle anything right now. It's going to take me too long to move my characters. I suppose I could move some characters over here. All right, let's prepare. No, that's not what we're going to do. Is it what we're going to do? Yeah, it is what we're going to do. We're going to prepare. So re-roll these heroes here. Hope for some higher scores. Yeah, that's slightly, is that slightly better? Our Berserker's slightly worse, but I think the other two have improved. And then we're going to move these two into this area here. And we're going to keep our battle card. So we're keeping the battle card. We need to reshuffle our deck because I've run out again. But now, of course, we will have that loot in here. So that's pretty cool. Whoop. Draw back up to five. Haven't got that loot yet. Then we need a new enemy to come in. Whoops. And our new enemy is some ratters. So interestingly, if we leave them alone, the card automatically flips. Ah, so look at this. If we win our first battle with the ratters, we win. But if we leave them alone for too long, then we flip the card and all of a sudden there's more of them. So this is one that we would be incentivized to defeating quickly. We're going to put that one there. So now we've got enemies on all three of our open exits. But the ratters are of this type, same as the goblins. So that is going to activate the goblins. And they're going to charge, move one towards the nearest hero and then battle. So they're coming into this area here, and we're going to go straight into a battle. But that's kind of good news for us, because we need a 4, a 3, and a 3, and we've got an 11, a 6, and a 9. So I'm glad I moved those heroes in here. But that is enough to defeat the goblins. We're going to flip them over onto their other side. We're going to roll our hero dice. Not too bad again, we've got an 11, well, a 6, that's pretty low. 4 is middling, but it is going to be enough to defeat the goblins. But we're not going to do that now. That is the end of the round. And we have got a battle. So I'm going to go straight into the battle. We need to discard a card. I think I'll discard a move card. We're going to battle. We need a 3 and a 3. We have got... A 6, an 11 and a 4, so I can assign two of them to that to win the battle. Then we need to re-roll our heroes. 15, or 1 and 4. Now this is a different type of enemy, so we cannot assign it to contribute towards our Treacherous Trail quest. 
The only thing we can do with it right now is assign it to our other quest. So I guess I'll do that. And then we can carry on with our go. We've got two moves and we've got a prepare. So I could move two heroes into the area with the ratters. In fact, I think we'll do that. We'll move that one in and we'll move that one in. And so if the ratters activate, we'll no, they'll no longer do the gather because they won't be in an empty area. They will actually sneak instead. Or, you know, maybe I'll get a chance to defeat them. We'll keep the prepare. We'll draw back up to five. There's that loot card. And then we'll bring a new enemy in. It is a golem. We don't have too many enemies left. And if we get to the end of the enemies and we can't draw another one, I believe that means we lose. So the golem is going to appear here. It is going to activate the shroom folk. The shroom folk are in an empty room and therefore they're going to move one towards the village. So they're going to move from there into there. So I'm, remember I'm using the little arrow there to point towards the room that an enemy is in when it is ambiguous. And that's the end of the go. Now I've got stuff that I could do here, but I've got this loot and it's kind of burning a hole in my pocket and maybe it'll be interesting to see what happens if I leave everything as it is. I don't think that's going to help me. It's probably going to make things worse. But we'll get to see what the loot is and we'll get to see how the game mechanics deal with there being more enemies knocking about. So I'm going to appraise. That means discarding four cards and then you get to flip this card. So I'm going to discard all four of my other cards, regardless of what they are. Then we can flip the loot and we've got a new thing. And so what we've got is an endless backpack. We can play this from our hand. So this is going to be part of our deck going forward. And we can play it to draw two cards from the deck and then we discard this card. So that essentially allows you to have more cards to play in uh, a particular round. So that's our hand completely used up in order to get that loot. But that's fine, I think. I'm going to draw two cards, then I need to shuffle. I'm going to look away so I can't see what we got going on there. But you can, and I'm going to cover that up like that. Draw up to five. There we go. That's our hand for the next round. And then we're going to bring in another enemy. So now all... Oh no, that's not true. I was going to say so now all three of our... Um, open tunnels have an enemy next to them but that's not true is it this one has this one has but this one here hasn't got an enemy in it because the shroom folk moved forward if the shroom folk had stayed there and all the open tunnels were blocked then the new enemy coming in would have skipped over them into that area and so obviously the more clogged up your dungeon gets the more they're going to skip and they end up going into your village but that's not going to happen this time because the shroom folk are there, which means the skeletons are going to come into here. Now the skeletons are going to activate all other enemies with this symbol. And we've actually got two of those. So we need to look at their, um, I always forget this word, their initiative number. I don't know why I always struggle to remember. Their initiative number. And enemies with a lower initiative number act first. So we're going to start with the shroom folk. Now the shroom folk, they're going to do skirmish, battle, then move one away from the village. So the shroom folk is going to battle the archmage. Is that the archmage? It's not, is it? It's the war priest. And that's not going to work out, because in order to defeat the shroom folk, we need a six and a four. And we've only got a one. So the shroom folk is going to win. Our hero is going to die, unfortunately. And we're going to move them to the cemetery. And then, after battling, they move one away from the village. But that's not possible. So I don't know what to do about that. 
I'm not too sure what to do about that because you can only have one enemy in a room and moving away from the village will mean uh, moving into a room with another enemy. So I guess they're just going to stay there. Having killed our poor, poor war priest, the shroom folk is going to stay there. Then the golem is going to activate. March, move one towards the village. So if they were to move into that room, they would be in the room with the shroom folk. So they're going to skip over and end up in this room here with our mercenary. So all of a sudden, it, you can see it doesn't take very long for the enemies to gain the upper hand and start to overrun the dungeon. The golem is only one step away from the entrance to the dungeon and um, beyond that the village. And we've got a lot of enemies in here so it, yeah it could get nasty really quickly. So as we go into our next turn things are looking a little bit stickier here. I'm definitely going to be... have I got a battle? I do have a battle so I am going to be battling those ratters I think and taking them out of the equation but I'm conscious that these enemies here are very close to our village and each enemy that gets into the village will damage a building and if all of our buildings become damaged, so that's all of them excluding the cemetery, so four damaged buildings means that we would lose the game. So I feel like I'm best placed to take down the ratters but I'm also conscious that not having a go at the golem or the shroom folk is a bad idea, especially given that both of these enemies need to be battled twice before I can um, defeat them. And it is a shame we lost our war priest. That's our second most powerful hero there. Now I can resurrect. I could resurrect that hero, but that requires three cards or a loot sacrifice. So that would that'd be pretty rough. But maybe I, maybe I could do that. Maybe I use the battle, we do the resurrect, and then maybe a move as well. I could do all of those things. That's what we're going to do. We're going to battle the ratters, and we've got a 15 and a 4 to match the 5 and the 3. And that is that enemy defeated. So we've now got two heroes counting towards that quest and two heroes counting towards that quest. Gonna re-roll those. 13 and 1. So that's the battle used. Then this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use all three of these cards to resurrect, choose a hero in the cemetery, roll that hero and place them in the village square. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring our warrior priest, our war priest rather, back to life. With a value of four, so that's not particularly good. And we've still got one card and it's a move. So I think I'm going to move our war priest in here. So hopefully they'll be placed well to take on an enemy in the near future. Hopefully in the near future. All right. That's all our cards used. I'm going to draw five fresh cards there. We've got a new enemy coming in. Oh, and we are very, very lucky. It is an enemy of that type, not matching the three that are already there. So they're not going to activate. That's super, super lucky. Can I optionally put the troll directly into my heroes? I feel like that's probably what I'd want to do but I don't have access to the rules right now so I'm not going to do that I'm going to put the troll there as I initially was going to right we've got to move we've got to move we've got to move lots of moving we've got our endless backpack draw two cards from your deck discard this card that's good because that means well that's one card there and then we'll do that shuffle what we've got here Put that under there. Uh, we're just getting moves. 
which is not really what we want. Right, I think I'm going to be able to finish the game here. No, I'm not, because I've got to battle the shroom folk twice. I got a bit excited then. So what we'll do is we will battle the shroom folk. Did I do a battle just now and not discard a card? I totally did, didn't I? The previous battle I did, I forgot to discard a card. I wouldn't have been able to move the war priest in there, which means we haven't got anyone at the moment. But that's okay, because I've got move cards coming out of my ears. So I will use that move to move into here. Now my preference probably would have been to move all the way over here to where the golem is, but the value of our berserker is so great they cannot sneak past the shroom folk, so that's just the way it goes. We're going to use another move card, whoop, that was on a seven, to move our mercenary into there of the shroom folk as well. Then we're going to battle and our shroom folk, we need a 6 and a 4. We've got a 13 and a 7, so we can defeat them in battle. Flipping it over, we've got to have three heroes to defeat it the second time. Reroll those two heroes. 14 and 1. And then we've just got a bunch of moves left. So I think... We need to get at least one other hero in here. I think I'm going to put that hero there. No, I'm going to move them all the way into there. And then I'm going to use another move to bring that hero. Am I going to move that hero? I'm not sure I will, actually. What I might do, just so you get to see one, is I might do the town hall action. Gossip. Draw a hero quest card and place it onto a dead end. So I'm going to have to discard two cards to do that. But then we get one of these hero quests. Let's give them a quick shuffle. I think I did it earlier, but I can't remember now. And the hero quest is a scout quest. It's called Trapper Keeper. If your scout is in this card's room, you may play this card in front of you. So the scout needs to go to the quest in order to claim the quest. And you have to do that before you can do anything else. Then the quest is you may discard a loot or killed monsters. And we would need three loots or killed monsters. And once we have done that, we would flip the card over and add a new action to our hand. And I don't think we're going to get to do that. I'm going to put that in this dead end here but we're not we're not going to get to do that I mean I could I mean theoretically we could really push for it and gamble and put the next three monsters we killed on there and get that before we complete one of the main quests which ends the game but I don't really have time left in this video to do something so ambitious so we're going to just uh Use that as a little teaching moment there so we know roughly how one of those hero quests works. Right, so I've drawn back up to five. We need to bring in another monster. We've only got three left after this one. These are ferals. I'm gonna come in here and the feral is gonna activate the troll. Ooh, look at this. I think we're gonna get some vill village damage here. If the troll is in a room with no heroes, when activated, runs two spaces towards the village. So the troll is going to go into here, but there's shroom folk in here. Going to go into here, but there is a golem in there. Going to go into here, and that is the first space of two that the troll needs to run. Then the troll would run into the village and damage one of the buildings. So it's going to damage the tavern. The troll then leaves the game and we do not have an opportunity to kill that creature. So there you go, that's what happens if an enemy gets into the village. Now we've got a battle and we've got an enemy we want to battle. However, to defeat the shroom folk, we would need a seven, a five and a five. 
and we've got a 4, a 1 and a 14, which obviously is no good. Now I've also got a prepare, which would allow me to re-roll some of my dice. And actually, do you know what? I'm going to move this hero in here as well. We're all going to converge on the mushroom folk. Then I'm going to prepare so I can re-roll any dice that I want. I'm going to re-roll all four of these and leave the berserker. And we've got a 10. Oh, no. We've got a 1, a 2, 2. So uh, we, we, didn't, we need another 5. We need another 5 and none of those are cutting it right now. Luckily, because I have the trained action version of Prepare, I may pay a card to take this action again, then discard this card. So I'm going to pay my search in order to roll these dice again. And there I get the five that I need. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting all smug about this, but I've only got one card left. I've only got one card left. And in order to play a battle, you need to be able to discard a card. So I can't, I can't finish this. We're all ready, and I can't finish it. So I'm going to draw back up to five, and we're going to have another enemy come into the mix. Oh no, this is a disaster. This is a disaster. Okay, so we've got a Mimic come in. That's going to activate the Shroom Folk, the Skeletons, and the Golem. We're going to start with the enemy that has the lowest initiative, which is the Shroom Folk. Now, that means they're going to charge towards the nearest hero, then battle. Oh my goodness. So, obviously, the nearest hero is in the same room as them. All the heroes are, apart from our lowly um, outlaw. So they're going to battle, which is a foolish move, quite frankly, because we have the 10, the 14 and the 5, which is enough to win the battle. I would then have to re-roll these guys, but that doesn't really matter because this is going to trigger the end of the game anyway. Shroomfolk defeated. Going to assign the Shroomfolk to the Treacherous Trail quest. That is three enemies, which is enough to complete the quest. On completion, return the cards here, sunny side up to the monster deck. I've just done that. Flip this card and place it into the village. The game ends. You are victorious this day, but the true evil still lurks below. So we still haven't defeated the Lich, but we've got a new building in our village that will help us in future playthroughs. And it is a map maker. And we can discard three cards or one loot and delve. Place a secret passage or explore one room. A secret passage. I'm not 100% sure how secret passages work in this game, but I will be finding out in my next playthrough. And there you go. We've uh, improved our situation a little bit. This particular generation of heroes has done their job. And uh, the next time we play, we'll have a new generation of heroes who are a little bit better placed to take on the dungeon. So there you go, folks. That is Die in a Dungeon from Rolling Kuntz. Uh, a, a cool little card game. Very different to anything else I've played before. Really nice to see a map illustrator, a cartographer, using the product that they have created in order to expand and build on and, and create an, an actual fully fledged game. So check it out. There will be a link in the description below. Die in a Dungeon, a good little game. Hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Folks, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.